Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to another hour of English classes here on Verbling.com. My name is Lisa, and I'm one of the English teachers here at Verbling. And in the last hour, we just had a nice class where we were listening to a song and going through the lyrics. And it's quite difficult to understand when you're listening to a song that you've never heard before, trying to hear those words, but it's a really good practice for your ear. And um, so if you want to look through my videos and see, you'll be able to see that uh, lesson there. It's a pretty interesting song that we were uh, listening to and trying to understand. And in this hour, we're going to be doing something completely different. We're going to go and switch to reading. And we're going to be reading some short articles, about three that I have for you. Three short articles um, about dolphins, about bugs, and about our brains and why we can't get music and certain songs out of our heads. What is, the, what is happening there? So um, as people know, I like to... Hope you guys learn English by looking at real things that we read every day here in uh, the U.S. and in other English-speaking countries. I usually teach intermediate and advanced classes, so you have the basics down, and now I want to help you improve on that and actually just use English in a real way, something that's interesting to you so that you can uh, not just study grammar and sentence structures and things like that and vocabulary, but actually um, learn something while you're also doing something in English. So uh, if you want to join, click on the Join Class button now. It should be available. Uh, of course, you always can make a reservation ahead of time, but you don't need to. And if you don't have a reservation, you just wait until you see the Join Class button, and then you join. Uh, if you join, what happens is the Google Plus Hangout opens in another window for you, and then you join us here, me and Raphael. So hi there, Raphael. Hi, Lisa. How you doing? I'm fine. Thanks for asking you. I'm doing well. You know, uh, later tonight I'm going to have a class about what happened in Brazil, but I think it might be too late for most Brazilians because I realized it's at 8 o'clock at night my time, and that's midnight your time. <laughs> 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 so, but, uh, yeah, what do you think about the outcome of the elections? Mm. Was it what you expected or no? No, no, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, mm. uh, you're, you're, we were already expecting the winner, so it's, right. at least for me it wasn't a surprise. I was, um, from what I had heard from other people, I was a little surprised that um, Aesio was the one who was in the runoff because I thought people thought Marina would be in the runoff with uh, Jilma, but no. Yes, but... Um, I don't know. I think Brazilians they have they change their mindsets very quickly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just to remember, just remembering what happened last year. I think no one remembers what happened last year. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think we 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 were born with a very low memory. <laughs> Short term memory loss. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I think, uh, well, you know, humans, uh, we tend to let, uh, look on the bright side, you know, so we don't necessarily want to remember the bad things that happen, so we keep looking ahead and forward, so maybe people will think, you know, oh, well, that happened in the past, uh, it probably won't happen again, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, you know, here in the U.S., we're pretty uh, skeptical anyways. Um, usually it doesn't matter too much um, whether or not a Republican wins or a Democrat wins. Pretty much there's a course that's been set by other powers that be and it's kind of there. So a lot of people, you know, for better or for worse in the United States are very uh, skeptical and not very optimistic about political change. Although some things do happen, I mean, every day, you know, there are things happening and changing. They're not necessarily uh, life-changing, world-changing type of things. Yeah. All right. Uh, what? I see, but I know. I think everyone has a, is afraid of to change. You know, if you if we have some leader with a different thinking, um, at yeah. least at first sight, we might. Uh, 
understand it understand badly or or take to uh, understand by the wrong side but I don't know I think we should give a, a little at least a a chance to maybe maybe they can maybe they can prove otherwise mm -hmm. you mean um, I'm not let me see if I understand what you're saying like maybe you've already had Jilma for a while so maybe give somebody else a chance to see what they would do is that what you're saying yes because their party wasn't ruling for 12 years right so I think I think people are a little enough uh, about what they had have done so far. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of other parties that could give, at, at least in my opinion, they, they deserve a chance to, to, to maybe they would be able to do better things in the government. Well, um, here in the United States, it's always a we have this like three, you know, branches of our government. So um, a lot of people don't see the president as like so important. Like the Congress is also important. So I'm wondering, in Brazil, is it is the president seen as really important, like the one who makes the laws and makes things happen? Because um, here in the U.S., it has happened in the past where. The president might have ideas and want to make changes, but if the Congress is not um, in agreement with that, it can stop and block, and you know things can kind of not happen because uh, there's no agreement. But I'm not sure how it works in Brazil with the president. Is the president more powerful in Brazil? Mm, no, no. I think it's a kind of similar. Uh, there is a there's a president. Uh, he has the last word in the. He has to veto, veto power or its approval. Sure. Okay. But uh, he has have to work with the in compliance with the with the Congress and the senators and deputies. And uh huh. Uh huh. And in in the Congress in Brazil, then are there the other um, are the other parties represented or not so much? There's a lot of parties. Uh, I think it's around 30 parties, 30 different parties here. Oh, okay. Well, wow. It's definitely a party. <laughs> it's definitely a party. <laughs> a lot of parties, yeah. Uh, yeah. In my, my opinion, that's the biggest problem because we don't have, uh, they, don't, they don't have ad ideology like Democrats and Republicans. I think you have, you United States, have, they have a strong basis uh, of government. Uh, here we don't have it uh, because they have they made coalitions and sometimes we have, uh, we have five ten parties uh, linked. So we do, uh, sometimes one of these parties we don't we don't like them, but we have to vote for them because we like the other the others. But it's complicated. Yeah. Yeah, that gets complicated when it's not clear what a person stands for, and and even if they stand for something, if they can't really, they don't have enough power to make anything happen, you know. So that's difficult. Exactly. I, you know, one of the things that I was reading about um, in this New York Times article was that a lot of people uh, have supported Jilma because they believe that she and her party have helped out with raising the standard of living, especially of like a certain level of poor people coming up to the middle class in the last 12 years. Do you understand it that way or not? Yes, but in my opinion, this was a good thing and bad for the same time because uh, they haven't um, developed it. Uh, they, have, they have developed uh, policies to make these poor people uh, earn, um, how can I say, uh, sustain himself, um, get get his own, uh, get uh, survive by himself. Okay, get uh, work, work, work conditions, life conditions. Uh, the government has created uh, several, how can I say, uh, programs. Just to support these people by giving, if we, for instance, if we, if a family keeps a child in school, at school, uh, they receive a monthly payment. Okay. Uh, this is called Bolsa Familia. Uh, it's a, it's a monthly payment for, uh, given by to these families. Yeah. 
what it's it's in my opinion it's just a, uh, it's, an, it's just a universal issue it's an universal uh, attitude or yeah measure because they don't uh, this I think this family uh, has has to have conditions to support themselves uh, without using these benefits. Mm -hmm. But of course, um, people um, mainly you're talking about poor people uh, with uh, with a low level of education and uh, with a low level of of I, I don't want to say cultural uh, low cultural level, but they they have they don't have received uh, good education standards. So. Uh, for I think for them it's okay, it's great, you know, if you, they receive a payment for the government of the government. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, I think in thinking long term, this is won't be a beneficial for them. Mm. For the yeah, some people I've heard um, <clears throat> they're frustrated by that too because uh, that happens a, a bit in some of these countries where there's a large population of poor people. And then a government comes in and like a president party or something, and they um, they give these like social welfare programs. But like you're saying, it's based on the government giving them money, but they're not necessarily learning how to take care of themselves, so that at some point they can go off that program. Instead, they're like dependent on that program, and so it's like almost like. Uh, buying votes because as long as the government continues with those programs those people are happier and then they continue to vote for that government exactly uh, I think it's one of the basis of Dilma's campaign uh, she uh, I think the the medium class to, to above uh, they are not happy with her anymore just the middle, for the middle class to under, you know, just to, to lowest, lowest, lowest classes of society are happy with her just because of this, uh, this program, and I think they were the most responsible for they were the most responsible for this winning, this partial winning of of the human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, especially in a country like Brazil where you have to vote. So, you know, uh, here in the United States, you don't have to vote. So the politicians really try to do things to get people to the polls and try to get them to, you know, vote some way, hopefully for them they want. But in Brazil, since you have to vote, um, you know, you're going to choose somebody. And if you think, if you don't really understand too much of what's happening, you might just choose the person that you've heard the most about, which would be the, the president, the incumbent. And, you know, especially if you think maybe she's done something okay. Like, you would only vote against her if you really didn't like her and you really wanted somebody else, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's something like that. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, Ken. Yes, hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. We, we, since it was just uh, us two, Rafael, mm -hmm. uh, we were just talking about the recent elections which happened yesterday in Brazil. Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and what's happening there. So um, I'm going to give you guys the option. So we can go to this article. So what I have is these three different articles. I thought they are kind of fun. <laughs> they're just kind of simple. Uh, they they ask, answer questions. This is actually from a Smithsonian magazine. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, Smithsonian. Smithsonian is um, it's actually a group of museums here in Washington DC and um, it's called the Smithsonian Institution and there are a bunch of different uh, museums. Museum of like history and you know elect, um, not like aerospace history and stuff like this. Technology and these are free museums in Washington, D.C., the capital of the United States. And so it's kind of like what we call a hotbed or a place where lots of things are always being explored. And so they have a magazine called the Smithsonian Magazine. And they have lots of different uh, topics, um, 
not just like you know a lot of other things are related to business and finance this is completely cultural so uh, things like uh, history culture uh, technology but technology related to the history of, of the world kind of thing not just in terms of business or something like that so they're pretty cool museums if you guys ever make it to Washington DC they're they're free and they're pretty cool to go look through and this um, I got these articles they have a I don't know one one part of their magazine. They have a lot of different uh, parts. This is under the Ask Smithsonian. So they're like short little questions, like how do dolphins sleep without drowning, and then a short little answer. And so there were three of them that I chose that we could read and talk about here. Um, we could do that, or we could just talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. <laughs> so it's up to you. <laughs> you guys want to feel like reading, Rafael? It's okay for me. Okay, great. All right, so why don't we start with this one. How do dolphins sleep without drowning? Uh, dolphins aren't like fish. We can breathe, or sorry, which, <laughs> which can breathe underwater. They're mammals, and they have to get to the surface to breathe air periodically. And a lot of them, like everyone's favorite, the bottlenose dolphin, can only hold their breath for seven minutes or so. So, how's a poor uh, cetacean supposed to get some shut-eye? Their brilliant answer, shut one eye at a time. While sleeping, dolphins let one hemisphere of their brains nod off while the other half keeps an eye out for trouble. Literally. If the left brain is sleeping, the right eye stays open and vice versa. Okay, Raphael, why don't you read that whole one for us there. Uh, dolphins aren't like fish, which can breathe underwater. They're mammals, and they have to get to the surface to breathe air periodically. And a lot of them, like everyone's favorite, the bottlenose of dolphin, can only hold their breath for seven minutes or so. So how's a poor cetacean supposed to get some shut-eye? Their brilliant answer shut one eye at a time. While sleeping, dolphins let one hemisphere of their brains nod off while the other half keeps an eye out for, the, for trouble. Literally, if the left brain is sleeping, the right eye stays open and vice versa. <laughs> okay, good. All right. <clears throat> so fish can breathe underwater. So just to point out the spelling there, to breathe is the verb and breath is the noun. But when we say breathe, we have that E at the end there. All right, so dolphins are mammals, and they have to get to the surface. So the surface of the water, they have to come up out of the water in order to breathe air periodically. Ken, what does uh, periodically mean? Do you know? <clears throat> Maybe continuously or... Not exactly continuously, because that would be like all the time. Mm, uh, maybe seven minutes, once <laughs> in a seven minutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, so another way would be like, and then. You could say something like, they have to come to the surface to breathe air now and then, or every so often. So yeah, I don't know how often, how long, I guess seven minutes, right, they, you remembered. So they can hold their breath for seven minutes or so. So at least every seven minutes they have to come to the surface. So that's called periodically. Uh, mm -hmm. And like I said, you can use uh, the words now and then, or you could be very specific, like you said, every seven minutes or um, every so often kind of thing. All right, so bottlenosed, that's just this type of dolphin. There are different types of dolphins, and they can hold their breath. Does anybody know how long uh, humans can hold their breath? I think there was somebody who just like set a new world record or something about holding their breath. Yeah, maybe French man. Oh yeah? How uh, long was it? I forgot. It's a movie. Oh. Yeah, I saw it in a movie, and he used to be uh, live close to my town. Actually, he grew up in Japan. Uh -huh. Jack, ah, I forgot his name. Yeah, anyway, the Deep Blue, the movie title is Deep Blue. It could mm. be the French film. Mm. 20 minutes? Amazing long time. 
I'm not sure the exact time, but... Uh, well, I just looked it up just now. I don't know if this is the guy you're talking about. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I made a mistake, yeah. He uh, dived deepest place. Oh. Not the deep, uh, longest place, sorry. Oh, okay, he was the deep. Well, I just looked it up real quick to see what I found. Um, this guy, his name is Mr. Severinsen. He's 41 years old, and he, um, 22 minutes. He was able to hold his breath for 22 minutes. That's that's crazy. <laughs> crazy. He's not a human. I can't even wow. imagine that. It's like insane. Oh my god. He's a superhuman. Yes. <laughs> I would say so. How can you not breathe for 22 minutes? Okay, well, anyways, there you go. Now you know. There's this guy. He must be like one of those. He's like a Zen master or something like that, probably. You know what I mean? Like those people who have a, real, a lot of control over their mind. Because, you know, you, some people might start freaking out, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I gotta breathe! I gotta breathe! <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. he needs to control his mind, too. Yeah. Wow, 22 minutes. That's incredible. Okay, I didn't know that. All right, so, whew, seven minutes. Way out does dolphin. <laughs> All right, so cetacean, that's just the species, the type of uh, animal it is. Okay, did you, guys, did you guys understand this? How does somebody get a uh, shut-eye? Do you know what that means? Shut-eye? Uh, to close their eyes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it actually means it's another way that we talk about getting some sleep. So if you are really tired and you say to somebody, oh, I got to go get some shut-eye, it means I have to go get some sleep. I have to go to sleep now. Yeah. So not just closing your eyes, but actually going to sleep. So, all right. So they, and then, in fact, it's kind of funny to use this expression, which we use to mean sleep, because, in fact, the dolphin does shut or close one eye at a time. Did you guys know this before? You read this? No. Yeah. no. Okay. okay, you knew this? Yes, I've read the article about that before. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know this, yes. Uh, okay. So you understand. So another um, term, so we have a couple of different expressions that we're using here in this one article about sleeping. So to nod off means to fall asleep. So they're letting one part of their brain go to sleep, nod off while the other half keeps an eye out for trouble. What does it mean uh, to keep an eye out for trouble? And then it says, literally. What does it mean, literally? Maybe, how can I say, keep, uh, keeping, uh, maybe keeping, uh, keep watching uh -huh. for trouble. Right. So whenever uh, somebody says something, like in English, and then they say, no, literally. It means like that's exactly what they're talking about. So sometimes it could sound like a an expression because that is an expression we use. Uh, keep keep an eye out for trouble. You know, like you tell somebody, uh, you know, watch out, be careful. But maybe there will or won't be trouble. But in this case, they are literally actually keeping an eye open, <laughs> an eye open mm -hmm. for trouble. Because generally, it just means you know, watch and make sure nothing bad happens, but in this case, literally an eye is being kept open. So that's why they say literally. So whenever you hear somebody, you know, maybe uh, you hear it in a movie or a TV episode or something, and somebody says something, and they say, oh no, literally, like literally that's what he did. Like he did just do this, you know. And maybe you thought it was just kind of like an expression or exaggeration or something, but literally means that's exactly what they mean. So keeping an eye open is exactly what's happening. All right. Uh, Lisa, could yeah. you could you repeat again the explanation of nod off? I haven't understood. Uh, yeah, to nod off just means to fall asleep. To nod off. So uh, I'll show you. I'll show you what it looks like exactly, really. So when we think of nodding, okay. So the word to nod usually means like this. You're nodding your head. And in, in, in the United States, when we do this, it means yes. And when we do that, it means no. So your nodding is this. 
and to nod off is like when you do this. <laughs> so you're falling asleep, but you're like nodding off like a little bit at a time. And so uh, you could tell somebody like, you know, maybe your grandpa's visiting you or something, and in the middle of the TV show, it off. You could say, yeah, he nodded off uh, during the show, which means he fell asleep. So he was like this, watching the show, and then he closed his eyes, and then like that. <laughs> so that's what nodding, to nod off means, to fall asleep. Yeah. So that's all it means. While sleeping, dolphins let one hemisphere, so one part of their brain, fall asleep or nod off, while the other half keeps an eye out for trouble literally. So literally just means they really do keep one eye open, and that's what they say here. The eye stays open and vice versa. So then in the next time, they'll sleep with the right side of their brain. Wow, that's amazing. So it's kind of like they're always awake and always asleep. <laughs> so, all right, so they always know when it's time to surface and breathe and when to get the heck out of Dodge. They seem to switch off every two hours or so until they get a full Eight hours a day. Okay, they need eight hours a day. Okay, Ken, um, go ahead and finish up that part there. Okay, uh, so they always know when it's time to surface and breathe and when to get to the heck out of Dutch. <laughs> yeah. They seem to switch off every two hours or so until they get a full eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. All right, so they always know when to come up, to surface, to come up out of the water. And breathe. So for um, for the pronunciation, Ken, just make sure you have that that e sound. Breathe. Breathe. Yes, exactly. So they know when to breathe, and then when to get the heck out of dodge. So to get the heck out of dodge, or to get out of dodge. Has anybody heard that expression before? I know dodge, but I didn't know. I know heck, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. heck can be used distance as well. Yeah, this is really good because, you know, heck, you understand, maybe you understand the word dodge, like you can, well, we know a lot of different words, like dodgeball is a game we play, and they made a movie about it. Uh, you can also dodge something by moving out of the way so it doesn't hit you. But in this case, get the heck out of dodge. Dodge means trouble here. So they use this expression up here about uh, keeping an eye out for trouble. So you got to keep an eye out for trouble, and then if you have trouble, you have to get away from the trouble. So you have to get the heck out of dodge. So it just means get out of trouble. Get out of a situation that is not good for you. And so this is actually an expression that's used more kind of in cowboy movies. Like, we got to get out of Dodge. Like, something dangerous is going to happen. Like, the bad guys are going to come, so we got to get out of here really quickly. You'll hear that kind of thing. So, that's what that means, if you hear it. <laughs> it's not so popular, but you hear it enough. As a, an American, you hear it enough that by the time you're, you know, a teenager, you probably understand what it means. If you don't, if you didn't learn it specifically before that, just by living and watching movies, reading books, they use it enough that you would understand it by then. All right, so um, they switch off every two hours or so until they have a full eight hours a day. So the rest of the time they're wide awake, but otherwise they're they're uh, spending time with one side of their brain on and one side sleeping. So that's that's interesting. It means, but I guess that means both sides of the brain can do both things. Okay. Now to our brains. <laughs> Why do songs get stuck in our heads? All right, do you guys have that problem? Your song gets stuck in your head and you just can't get it out? Yes, it all happens. Constantly. <laughs> Constantly. Uh, Raphael, what do you do when that happens and you don't like the song that you have in your head? <laughs> it's complicated. It's, I don't know, I try to, to listen to another song or maybe do some activities, but it's hard. Sometimes <laughs> it can last for a, for even a week sometimes. Oh my gosh, wow. Uh, yeah. Even uh, in, I think it's worse when the music gets on the, the parade, you know, in, on the spotlight. Uh -huh. you know, when, you, when you can listen to this music almost every time on the radio and it's complicated. Uh -huh. but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate it when I have a song, like somebody 
like, you know, just sings like one line of the song and then it's in my head. And it might not even be a song I like, but it's just there now because somebody I heard somebody sing, you know, one line or something. <laughs> Uh, and what really annoys me is the fact that sometimes we are studying and trying to memorize some word, and I simply don't, I can't memorize the word, but I listen to this song, you know, and it's easy. I know. It annoys me. Yeah. It, it is. Right. Ken, what about you? Do you have any tricks for getting songs out of your head that you don't want in your head? Usually, my favorite song stick, uh -huh. uh, stick around, stick in my head. Head. In your head, oh, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's my pleasure. Oh, so you actually, did. <laughs> and, and it all happened oh, 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 while I, I, I'm su uh, swimming. Oh. Yeah, maybe so. It's, it's kind of. Maybe in a swimming it has rhythm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it rhythm might be related to or endorphin or kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Related. yeah. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, let's see what they tell us here. Why do songs get stuck in our heads? Ah, uh, yes, the evil earworm, which sometimes has our hearing seemingly sticking on the same song over and over. Polls show that a stunning 90% of us have experienced these hearing parasites, and 9 out of 10 report having them at least weekly. Who remembers these classic offenders? Who let the dogs out or the Macarena? And my personal favorite, Call Me Maybe. So what does science tell us about this musical torture? Not a whole lot yet. Not a whole lot yet, but we're working on it. Okay, Ken, why don't you read that first part there for us? <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, oh, yes, the evil ear warm which sometimes has our hearing seem seemingly sticking uh, <coughs> sorry, sticking on the same song over and over. Paul shows that a stunning 90% of us have experienced these hearing parasites and 9 out of 10 report having them at least weekly. Okay. Who remembers uh, these uh, classic offenders? Who read the dog out? <laughs> uh, or the Macarena, and my personal favorite, Call Me Maybe. So what does science tell us about this musical torture? Not a whole uh, lot yet, but we are working on it. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the earworm. So do you think of, it's not really an earworm, it's like an earworm, and it's evil because we get it stuck in there and we can't get it out. So an earworm, a worm is, I think you guys know what a worm is? a little creature that grows in the dirt, lives in the dirt, and you use it for fishing sometimes. So the earworm is kind of like a thing that gets in there and you can't get it out. Um, so seemingly, so it seems like it's sticking on the same song. So the same song over and over again. Uh, so they do polls where they ask people questions, you know, and it shows, uh, the polls show a stunning, so it's kind of like shocking, 90% of us have this experience where we have these hearing parasites. They're not really parasites, but it sounds, they just, this is like a, you know, it's what it's like. It's like having this little bug in there and you can't get it out. So 9 out of 10 people report having them at least weekly. So like, <laughs> yours last for a week, that's a while, Raphael, but I mean, I have them every couple of days probably. It really depends uh, who I'm hanging around with and if they're singing or not or something. And then uh, they ask you the question, who remembers these classic offenders? So these classic means like they're, you know, um, a lot, it happened to a lot of people in the past, so they've become classic songs that a lot of people get stuck in their head. They're the offenders, the ones causing the problems. Uh, do you guys know these songs? Who Let the Dogs Out? That one? Uh, yes, yes, I know that. That's, yeah. So that one is stuck <laughs> in your head because... If you hear somebody say it or you just hear the music, you can be walking around all day going, who let the dogs out <laughs> in the Macarena and the Call Me Maybe. So those ones are very common, but other ones are as well. So, uh, Rafael, do you have one that comes all the time? Uh, Random. Yes, uh, there's a... 
I was listening to the song. I think it was yesterday, actually. It was from I don't remember the band because it was uh, Alice in Chains. Oh, I remember awesome. the song. Uh, Man in the Box. Yes. Okay. I listened to this song yesterday, and it keeps rolling in my head. This song, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Some of the songs here are really catchy. All right. So, what does it tell us about uh, this musical torture? This nothing, pretty much. It sounds like not a whole lot. So, whenever you say not a whole lot, it's a way to answer that question. So, what do you know about this? And if you don't know very much, you just say not a whole lot. Um, so it's like saying not very much. So not a whole lot, but we're working on it. So the scientists are trying to figure this out. They're working on it. Um, okay, some say earworms keep our brains occupied when they have nothing better to do. Others believe that they cause a part of our brain called the auditory cortex to itch, meaning we have to scratch it. The O, oh, so helpful cures include singing the whole song to its end, or occupying your brain some other way, such as solving puzzles. Okay, Raphael, can read it. Some say earworms keep our brains occupied when they have nothing better to do. Others believe that they cause a part of our brain called the auditory cortex to itch, meaning we have to scratch it. Uh, the O, so helpful cures, include singing the whole song to its end, or occupying your poor brain some other way, such as solving puzzles. Mm -hmm. So this will work. <laughs> I don't know if that works for me. <laughs> I think I would keep going. All right, so you, um, some people think that uh, you have to keep your brains occupied with something, busy with something, so that's what happens with these earworms coming in. Again, they're not really worms. It's just the way that they're calling this kind of uh, phenomenon. Um, and you keep it occupied, so they come in when you have nothing better to do. So when there's a little space and nothing's happening in your brain, in comes like a song or something. Um, other people think it's part of this auditory cortex, which is like having an itch. So, of course, when you have an itch on your skin, you usually have to scratch it. And so in this case, it's kind of the same thing. You have some kind of uh, itching feeling in your brain. I don't, that's, it's a weird way to explain it, I guess. And then something has to, to alleviate that, like a scratch. Uh, but in this case, it's like something going on in your brain all the time. So that rep repetition of the song over and over again. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I... Sometimes I don't even remember the whole song. <laughs> so that would be hard. It's just usually it's one sentence or something that's kind of catchy in the song. So I don't know. We could try these cures. So they say, oh, so helpful, because it's kind of sarcastic when they say, oh, so helpful cures, because they don't really work necessarily. But you could try it, singing the song to the end or doing something else to keep your brain busy, like solving a puzzle or something like that. I don't know. Ken, you don't seem to have the problem with it being a torture. Maybe you you mm. like all the songs that you hear. <laughs> yeah, my favorite song, uh, you, know, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, kind of uh, I guess, running in my, my head. Yeah. So it's a pleasure to me. Yeah. I enjoy it. And you never have the experience where, like, maybe you hear a mm. song on um, yeah. radio. Uh, before, no? Yeah, before I read the article, I didn't know that some people feel discomfort about that. Ah. It's just pleasure to me. Uh huh, uh huh. Maybe when I'm feeling high, yeah, this phenomenon appears to me, like I'm swimming or driving or somewhat. Yeah. High, the same pace situation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, cool. Yeah, sometimes um, it doesn't bug me. It mostly bugs me if I have a song that I don't necessarily want to be in my head because I don't necessarily want to be singing that song. And it usually happens that I hear somebody else singing it, but of course I know it because it was on the radio a long time ago or something like that. Right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty lucky for you. <laughs> yeah, and and I, I like, you know, 
uh, such uh, kind of catchy, uh, summer stupid <laughs> <laughs> bubblegum music. So yeah, I, I can enjoy it. <laughs> do you do you listen to the radio a lot? Uh no. Nowadays, you know, I listen to the music CD, computer. Oh, okay. uh, not not on the radio so much nowadays. Not so much on the radio. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. What about you, Raphael? Do you listen to the radio much, or do you choose your own songs, like just on the computer or something? Yes, most of the time I choose my own songs and listen to MP3s. Sometimes I, nowadays I just listen to the radio for news and some some programs I like to listen, but not not for music. Oh, okay. Did you ever have that song? Uh, <clears throat> By Michelle Tello, the Nosa Nosa one in your head. Oh my God! <laughs> that one was horrible. <laughs> I can't stand this song. Oh, it's disgusting. Every every day, every time this annoying song hitting you, everyone singing it. Yeah, well, that's the sometimes those kind of annoying songs are not even music, but like they're commercial. Uh, we call commercial jingles. A jingle is like a little song that's a commercial, really. Or like if a popular song becomes part of a commercial, then it can get annoying to listen to because you hear it so much over and over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. I'm loving it. You what? Yeah. I'm, I'm loving it. You love it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I can do. McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's maybe Ken. You should um, you could write a rebuttal to this thing and say just enjoy it. You know, it's not torture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, to me, yeah, it's a pleasure to me, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Ken, do you uh, are you a musician? Do you play music or sing or anything like that? No, I, I like singing. I like music. That's why I can enjoy the yeah this phenomena. I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a musician. <laughs> when, uh, when you have songs stuck in your head, are they usually Japanese songs or songs in English? Both. Both? Mm. The, because uh, I listen to a lot of uh, you know, J-pop, J-rock, and British and American rocks. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Are there any songs that you don't like that you wouldn't want to have in your head? Mm. No. As far as I remember, no. Okay. No. We can't infiltrate your mind. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rafael? Do you mostly have uh, Portuguese, Brazilian songs, or English songs, or both? Um, both are the same as Aksha. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Some, uh, I, I'm very eclectic, of course. Uh, all but these examples. I don't like to even to mention like Michelle Tello and others. <laughs> I really hate. But yeah. I'm very eclectic, you know, I like to listen to almost everything. Ah, uh, uh huh. Yeah. I have a lot of songs that I like. Usually it's ones that are really old from a long time ago that somebody else uh, knows. Is he famous I there in the United States? There's what? Uh, is Michelle Tello famous there? In no. The no, I don't think so. I think it was because of soccer. There was like a video that went around, and that was there were like a lot of uh, soccer famous soccer players dancing to the music. And okay, okay. Yeah, and I think it got popular, and so uh, you know, a lot of people couldn't understand the the words, but they could sing the nosa nosa. You know, they could say that part. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, okay. They didn't know really what was going on in the song. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's, here's our last little one here. Uh, why do bugs die on their backs? A bug's death. Okay, well, they don't all die that way, but many succumb to the laws of physics in their final moments. It's at that point that normal blood flow stops, the legs contract, and the bug gets top-heavy. Inevitably, it falls over onto its back. Of course, a stiff breeze or a curious pet can have the same effect. And once it finds itself belly up, it can be pretty tough for an insect to get back on its feet. Okay. <laughs> Raphael. Well, they don't, they don't all die that way. 
but many succumb to the laws of physics, physics in their final moments. It's at that point that normal blood flow stops, the legs contract, and the buzz gets, gets stopped heavy. Inevitably, it falls over onto its back. Of course, a stiff breeze or a curious pet can have the same effect. And once it finds itself belly up, it can be pretty tough for an insect to get back on its feet. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> um, yeah, the, the picture that I had, I don't know if you guys opened it, that showed the, 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 the bug on its back. So they don't all die that way. So it doesn't mean they're going to die um, that way. But once they do die, so many succumb to. Do you guys know that? Expression to succumb to something. Do you guys know what that means? Uh, they mm -hmm. lose. They lose to something. They, they, yeah, that's a good way to say. Yeah. If you succumb, like say you're on a diet and you succumb to the chocolate cake, it means you you couldn't you couldn't resist, you know. <laughs> so you fell, you failed, kind of thing, or you you basically had to go along and eat the chocolate cake. So in this case, they succumb to the laws of physics. So they have to follow the laws of physics in their final moments. Your final moments is your death, basically, in your final moments. So as they're dying, this sentence here explains what is happening. So the normal blood flow stops, and the legs contract. So that means they, they get stuck in one place. You know, they're, they're not, you're not going to move, be able to move them anymore. They, they bent and now they're stuck there. And then, of course, the bug gets top-heavy. So the top part of the bug weighs more, and so then it basically, inevitably, you guys know the word inevitably? Um, avoidably. Uh-huh, right. It has to happen. It's going to happen, right? Um, it falls over onto its back. So if you're looking at prepositions there, uh, the bug falls over on its back or on to. If you're going from not on your back to your back, you can say roll over onto your back kind of thing. So it falls over onto its back and then it, it's dead and, it, and we see it and so it looks like they die on their backs. But that's just the ending place <laughs> that they ended it up. Um, so a stiff breeze. What does a stiff breeze mean? Anybody? Mm. Kind of uh, how can I say? Breeze is almost stop, almost stop. It's about to stop. A breeze is a wind. So like a strong wind, a stiff breeze. So if you say it's breezy outside, it means the wind is blowing. <clears throat> so if you think of a little bug, you know, crawling along the ground or something like that, if a stiff breeze or like kind of a strong breeze or a strong wind comes up, they can uh, have the same effect by flipping it over onto its back. Or a curious pet, so some kind of cat maybe, or dog or something comes over looking at the bug, it could have the same effect where it, the, it moves it over onto its back, so then it's on the back. And once it finds itself, itself belly up, so the belly of the uh, bug facing up, facing the sky, it can be pretty tough, you know, pretty hard, pretty difficult for them to get back on its feet. <laughs> so and that's kind of a play on words there because it's literal. Like it can actually be hard for the bug to turn over and then start walking again on its feet because it's top heavy. And it can also be, uh, when we say get back on your feet, it means feel better. So it might actually just die. You know, but it can be difficult for them, uh, but they can do it. Bugs can normally rock themselves upright, but if it's injured or it's weak or it's sick, it can have a really hard time coordinating its limbs. And even more so, if a pesticide is disrupting its nervous system, that will cause spasms and ultimately a total system shutdown. Okay, again. Okay. Okay, bugs can normally rock themselves upright, but if it, it, it's injured or it's weak or it's sick, it can have a really hard time 
coordinating its limbs. And every, every, even more, so if a pesticide is disrupting its nervous, nervous, nervous system, mm -hmm. that we call a spasm, and ultimately a total system shutdown. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it can be hard for them to get back on their feet, or its feet, um, singular one, but normally they can rock themselves upright. So to rock means to move. They can kind of like go back and forth and then boop, slip over, and that uh, means they're upright. So upright means when you're on your feet and you're going the right way that you're supposed to be going for whatever animal that you are. Um, but it's hard to do it if it's injured, so if it had an accident or something, or the cat, you know, <laughs> took off one of its uh, legs or something. We are sick also. Hi there, minute. I'm going to mute you because you have some background noise. Let me just finish uh, talking about this here. Um, so it can be hard to, uh, they can have a really hard time coordinating. Coordinating means working together, getting your limbs. So in this case, the bug has some uh, legs here, something like this, trying to get them working together again. That's coordinating. And especially if, if uh, the nervous system of the little bug is being disrupted or you know affected negatively because of some kind of pesticide that is used to try to kill the bug, um, so that could harm the bug as well, making it hard for them to get back up on their feet and continue walking along. They could have spasms and ultimately total system shut down. So that's when they die. The whole system just is dead. <laughs> okay, so let me... Um, oh, we lost Raphael. Um, Ken, I was going to ask you about bugs in Japan. Are there any specific bugs that are crawling around your house normally in Japan? What would be Media, the most eh? common bug? Mosquitoes. Oh, really? Oh. And cockroach. Yeah. And spiders. Uh huh. And do you have any uh, poisonous spiders? Uh not so many, but because of global warming, yeah. Uh, some poisonous spiders is is going north. So yeah, I. It news said a uh, poisonous bug, uh, I mean a spider, was found in my town. But it's rare, actually. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, um, do you have quite a lot of mosquitoes during like, the summer? Yes, because Japanese summer is muggy. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, uh, mos mos mosquito heaven. Yeah, I hate mosquitoes. <laughs> they, they get me. When I'm around, when I lived in California, I had more mosquitoes. In Washington, we don't really have. Mm -hmm. Washington, uh, yeah. where I live, I always say it's very benign. It means very peaceful. Nothing, like nothing's gonna kill you <laughs> <laughs> or hurt you a lot. We have little spiders and some bugs. Mm. Now and then a mosquito or two, some flies, but not too much. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Rafael, what about uh, in Rio? Are there any uh, bugs that you have to watch out for? Poisonous spiders or anything like that? Mm, not here where I live, uh, we don't, we don't, because I live in the city, so we don't have these uh, more dangerous animals. But if we move to inner cities, yeah. it's easier to find a, it's easier to find a, a massive animal, uh, mm. like a snake or a, a spider. Yeah. In um, in Rio, do you have, do you guys have to worry about mosquitoes also? A lot, oh. uh, especially especially in the summer. I think they, I think I think it's the time they reproduce more frequently. I think. Mm. Yeah, they. We, we have a lot of mosquitoes here. What, in the hot of the hot days. What do people do to not get bitten by mosquitoes? Like, do you put stuff on, or do you have like certain plants around your house or something, or? Uh, we. We use uh, insecticides, pesticides, and okay, you do okay, yeah. And repellents, uh, we spread over our our skin in order to prevent from being uh, to get bit. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
What about in Japan? Uh, can do you guys uh, spray also? Do yeah, yeah bug spray or uh, how can you say it? Uh, kind of one herb is uh, to kill mosquito. Yeah. And I don't know the English. Maybe okay. This I don't know. This one. DDT or something? Oh. Uh, yeah, this herb uh, kill mosquito. Okay. So in the past, it's a kind of a uh, like how can say candle we light on up, but nowadays it's electric or spray type available. Oh, okay. So it looks like yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's an old type. Nowadays, it's uh, I I'm using electric one. Oh right, okay. <laughs> burning. Or a spray spray one spray can to spray uh -huh. this. Chemical or herb. Oh wow! Is it is it okay for um, people? Yeah, I think so. I believe so because uh, you know that for people this uh, poison, uh, how can you say, uh, process in the our livers, but uh, insects doesn't have liver, liver yeah. so uh, mm -hmm. they they die. I see. I see. Okay, yeah, it says they're widely used in Asia, Africa, and South America. Have, do you use those too, Rafael? These coils? Uh, Have you seen them? Not, not nowadays, but we were used to... We used to to use this repellent. Uh, uh -huh. I remember when I was a child, my mom used to buy this, this repellent. And I don't think they even are even selling this nowadays. I don't know. I haven't found it yet in the supermarkets. Yeah. I think I have to, to look for it because I don't know if they're still selling this balance. Yeah. Are you seeing more mosquitoes now as it's getting warmer? Sorry? Yeah. Are you seeing more mosquitoes around now that it's getting uh, warmer? Not yet, but I think soon they will, they will appear, they will show up. Uh -huh. uh huh. Yeah. All right. Well, interesting. Um, I we, I had to deal with more bugs and spiders when I lived in California because that's where I grew up. We have the they always had the black widow spider. You guys know that one? Black widow spider. It's this spider right here, and it's very dangerous. And um, you always had to be careful because if you uh. Like in a garage or something, if you had your shoes outside or in a garage even, you have to make sure that there's not a black widow spider in your shoe before you put your shoes on. Uh, because if you put your foot in there and you get bit, you might have to go to the hospital. So, I don't know if people actually die nowadays, but they're pretty dangerous. So. I think children die. Children. Yeah, maybe. Sorry. Yeah. Do you have those in Brazil? Uh, not here where I live, but there's some place we have it. We have oh, this yeah. species. Yeah, the, that's the the main one, and that's the female only. The female is the black widow with the the red on the belly there. Is it so. small? How, how big it is? Small. It's small. Very small. Okay. It's not big. Yeah, maybe this spider appeared in my town. Really? Similar to that. Yeah, it, that spider has red dot or something. Uh -huh. right. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's you. This is what it looks like in California, mostly like that. Mm -hmm. You can just kill it. You can kill it by stepping on it or something. But you gotta be careful. You like have a shoe on. You wouldn't want to touch it or have it. One time, my ex-husband, he was driving the van, our van we had, and he was on the highway, and he noticed the black little spider crawling up his leg, <laughs> and he got mm -hmm. like. You know, tried not to freak out, and he had to pull over real quick, and then he got it off of him. So they don't necessarily bite you just because they're on you. They might crawl around, but you do have to be careful. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, we just went over our time, guys, so I better let you go. <laughs> thanks for coming to class and talking and reading. It was, uh, it was fun. Okay, okay thank you, Lisa. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye, you. Uh, Max Bye. <laughs> See Bye. You.